just a word of warning. Parts of this story contain graphic explanations of a murder. It is not for the weak of stomach. So sit back and enjoy. How are we doing folks? Welcome back to another episode of Dead Cold. I'm in southwest London tonight. I'm in this fantastic location, which is Barnes Old Cemetery. Now I've been wanting to come here for a year or two. I tried to come last. I tried to come here last year. Couldn't do it because of lockdown. So I've come back here tonight um, with a friend of mine. Uh, she's called Lindsay, Lindsay Siviter, and she is a historian and has worked in the Metropolitan Crime Museum as well. So do you want to come and say hello, Pat? Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay uh, has been following a story to do with this, uh, to do with this particular, um, this particular cemetery, uh, which I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that she's going to tell the story there tonight. Um, we'll also tell, we'll tell the story, and we'll have a bit of a, we'll have a bit of a paranormal investigation as well. See if we can get nothing, and more importantly, try and locate. Hopefully, the lady in question will locate us to her resting place because it is unknown. few little facts and figures on this place yeah Lindsay? no problem so the, the cemetery as you said was sort of like constructed in the 1850s around 1854 um, the Church of England bought two acres of land for 10 pounds and then they sort of for another 1,400 pounds built a chapel and various other sections and to do all the landscaping and that that paid for that money um, overall I discovered because there's not actually that much information about it online but yeah I was quite surprised when I discovered there's over 3,000 burials here to be honest um, so the sort of it's actually an offshoot and it was created on purpose as an offshoot uh, for the churchyard of the local church of St Mary's right. and it's actually connected with that church so obviously the churchyard there was full and like many other places they then start putting you know the people in sort of places further out this is fairly close to St Mary's it's not overly close but closer than something like the the big places in London which yep. you get so it's an offshoot if you like of St Mary's um, and then it was sort of, it's been in use up until the 1950s right. uh, for interments. And then in 1965, around that time, the borough of Richmond upon Thames Council sort of acquired it. And then it was going to be turned into a, what we call a lawn cemetery. Right. <coughs> a lawn cemetery is basically a big sort of piece of ground. And then instead of having standing memorials, you have sort of little memorial markers type yeah. thing. And that, that was the plan. So they removed all the railings around it. They removed the chapel and all these other buildings. They got rid of everything. And then the plan was abandoned for some reason. We don't know why. I'm not able to discover why, but the plan was abandoned. Um, and then it sort of was in, in disrepute, really, for many, many years. Yep. It was very badly desecrated. There was a lot of vandalism and crime and stuff in here. And then in the later, so latter few years, thankfully, the council and the boroughs have looked after it a little bit more. Yep. It's now sort of like an open cemetery in the fact that it's it's looked after, it's a conservation area now. Yeah. So they're letting things grow on purpose and there's lots of amazing birds and flora and fauna yeah. um, in here now, which are sort of protected and things as well. So it's a, a very different feel from its original idea, yeah. but it, it's nice. You come here in the daytime, there's a lot of dog walkers and people walking through and there's a sports center next door. Um, but this time of night, it's nice and quiet. Apart from the planes going over. Yes, <laughs> you'll have to, have to excuse the planes. I'm gonna try and edit out as much as I possibly can but we're on the direct route, which I believe will be Heathrow, the airport that never <laughs> sleeps. Exactly. <laughs> There's a very, very good folklore story attached to this graveyard. Um, and Lindsay knows quite a bit about it, to be fair. I know a little bit about it, but Lindsay knows a lot more. <laughs> so folks, somewhere in this cemetery lies the remains of a murder victim. Her name was Julia Martha Thomas, and she was killed at the beginning of March in 1879. And the murderess's name, because she was killed by one of her servants, was Kate Webster, Catherine Webster, Kate Webster. It's a very intriguing story because, although I can tell you what happened and the actual murder and everything, they didn't actually know the identity of the body when they had to tragically bury this lady. And in the burial register, I discovered it actually says a woman unknown. But then later, and we don't know how later, somebody has written in, in hand ink, sort of handwriting, 
Um, victim of Kate Webster, because you know, Martha Thomas. We actually do know her name, sort of, you know, um, Juliet Martha Thomas. So somebody has actually written something later on, which is nice. So at least she's identified in the burial register. But the thing is, when they buried this lady at the time, she had been dismembered by Catherine Webster. And only a section of her body actually lies in this cemetery, in an unmarked grave. We don't know where she is. I've been trying to track down for many years the burial register, well, not the register, but, but the location of where all the graves are and who's where, the plans, if you like. And they've been lost. There's various reasons for that. They've been lost. So we just still don't know where she's buried. The ghost story attached to this, the myth, is that apparently, and we're not sure why, a ghostly nun is seen to hover above her grave. The twist in this story is the fact that her torso and her legs were buried here and a foot, because <laughs> she was dismembered, but the other foot and her head was not buried here. The head was never found at the time, okay? The foot appeared on top of an allotment area in Twickenham shortly afterwards, so they, they had the foot. We moved in the future now to 2010 and Sir David Attenborough's garden in Richmond. <laughs> Brilliant. And workmen are sort of doing all of this work on the back garden. He's bought up various properties nearby, including the location of an old pub, the Hole in the Wall pub. And they're, they're digging all this up and they find a smashed skull. And they call in the Metropolitan Police and they actually have to go and investigate this. Um, an actual inquest was done, an official inquest was done on this, this partial skull. It's only the top half, there's no uh, lower half. And they were like, well, who does it belong to? So obviously people in the Met had to sort of, you know, do research. And they believed, and other people believed, that it was actually Julia Marthas' Thomas's missing skull. And it was buried in a different cemetery elsewhere in Richmond. And I sort of heard about this. I was working at the Crime Museum at the time, and I was uh, we, I got to meet one of the investigating officers. And they, as I said, well, don't mean to be rude, but why did you not put her head with the rest of her remains? Oh, well, we, we couldn't locate where she was buried. Uh, we don't know where she was. I'm like, well, and I got my phone. I went, well, here's a copy of the burial register. She's actually in old Barnes Old Cemetery. Didn't you know? Oh, no. Great investigation. No, Oh, so I'm like, well, that means you've put her head in a different part of London to the rest of her poor thing. Um, so there we go. It, I mean, it would be nice actually one day if we ever could locate her, because it would be nice to actually oh, put definitely. her back together. <laughs> so. so the story of Julia's murder is 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 very complicated, but I'll try and simplify it. So basically, at the beginning of March um, in 1879, she's uh, it's a Sunday, she's going to church. She has a bit of an altercation, a bit of an argument, apparently. And, and all of this, bearing in mind, is from Kate Webster's perspective at her trial. This is yep. the, what she's telling the police. We don't obviously have Julia's side of the story. But Kate said, well, we had a bit of an argument. She went off to church. I, I, I was actually a bit late, so I'd been drinking down the pub. She wasn't very impressed. We had an argument. She sort of went out, and then she came back from church. We had another argument. And I actually pushed her down the stairs, and then I sort of tried to strangle her. I was in a fit of passion, okay? Then the kind of story kind of changed in that then she blamed two other gentlemen in this case, which, you know, and then possibly a third implicated as well. And then when she sort of caught, eventually she says, oh, no, it, it wasn't them, it was just me. There's so many open sort of yeah, interpretations yeah. of this story. Yeah. We will never know the real truth, sadly, of what happened that night. But what we do know is that Kate or her accomplices, and we'll say it's Kate, because actually Kate was hanged for this crime, folks. So Kate actually, after getting the body, she got a razor, cut off the victim's head, disemboweled her, cut her into sections, boiled some of those body parts, burnt some others in the copper. Awful and then kind of distributed the body around London through various means, mainly through the, se the torso section and the legs and stuff. They were put inside a big box yeah. and she went out to see various people and then she chucked this box off Richmond Bridge and then literally on the 5th of March, a few days later, it was found by a local chap with his horse and cart walking towards Barnes Bridge, which is just down the road from here, floating. And he thought, oh, it looks like a treasure chest. Maybe it's like there's some burglary implements, like, you know, things that or, or stuff that's treasures in it, you know. So he's quite excited getting it out. And we must have Surprise. got such a shock when he found body parts wrapped in brown paper, oh, obviously. Goodness. I mean, that's horrific. 
as I said, her foot was later found elsewhere, but the head at the time was, was never found. But the head apparently went into a black bag and she turned up at this pub one night with some other friends with this black bag, went out for 20 minutes, came back, the bag wasn't with her. Mm. So they presumed that's when she must have disposed of it. The point being, I'm not too sure that's true because where her skull was found was nowhere near this pub, yeah. several miles away. Right. So A, what was in the black bag, B, what happened to the black bag and C, what is that skull? Is that skull at all yeah, yeah, the yeah. right skull? I be. do actually have doubts as a historian, but I guess it's too late now <laughs> to know. Well. Okay, folks, we have come to a quite secluded um, and overgrown part of this uh, of Barnes Old Cemetery. We've got a few things set up around us. We've got the um, we've got my mail room over there. Got a K2 down here. I've got a couple of cat balls planted around the place as well, and obviously, unless, unless they go off, you can't really. See. Different in the living room. Hmm. I put the ghost app on just before I set this, just before I put the. Are you okay? We're okay. Are you okay? I tell you what, she's flame and active, that's for sure. First word that came up, I know it's not, I know I haven't got proof of this, but it came up was damaged. Now there's a load of damage. And then elderly as and well. And then elderly came up as well. Um, again. I hear you. Wow. This is a. Uh, <laughs> Come and speak to us if you're here. It's quite strange. Quite strange because I've never had this much activity from this app before. I don't know if that's because we're because of the location we're in or what, but. So we'll have a bit of a call out here. See if anything there. Uh, him. Him. Do you mean soon? Ooh. Him and soon. I'd like to call out to uh, any spirits that may reside, any energies that may reside in this uh, in this area. If you can hear us above the uh, the drone of the uh, of the Heathrow flight path. They're probably doing very well. <laughs> so that magnetic field thing you've got going on here is going mm. higher and higher. It's interesting. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. <laughs> Who's here, please? Do we have a name? What's your name? Don't be shy. Closer. 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 Okay, where do we need this? What is this? What is this? <laughs> okay, this is a, an electro, electrical device. We call it a telephone. Okay, but it's also got a special thing on an app on it. And, and this, we kind of use this if we want to try and communicate with whoever's here. Or the spirits of the next world, if that's you. Please, if you can communicate through this, please do. I'm Lindsay. This is Mark. We're not here to harm you in any way. We're just here to try and communicate with you. Maybe you can help us. Maybe you might be able to tell us where Julia is buried. Maybe you... Rituals. 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 Well, certainly a lot of burial rituals. Gun. Gun. Wow. Gun. Some of these are uh, the words that have come up in this thing now so far. I've never even heard them come up with this thing before. Really? Tell us more, please. Female. Wow. Female. Hello. Well, I'm female, obviously. Are you female? Whoever's talking. What is your name? My name is Lindsay. Hello. What's your name? Hanged. Hanged? Wow. Wow. Well, we do know that... Kate Webster, famous murderess of Julia Martha Thomas, was indeed hanged on the 29th of July, 1879. Kate, maybe you haunt this area. Julia Martha Thomas, if you can hear us, please come through to us. 
Maybe that's you trying to tell us your story. Julia, can you hear us in here? Julia Thomas? Burnt. Burnt. Oh my gosh. Married. We, well, Julia, if this is you, we, you were married a couple of times, we know, but actually we also know some of your skeleton was burnt. Wow. In the copper. Psychic. Well, I don't know if we're psychic, but I do believe in such things. Are you psychic? Can you contact us? We're here to find you. If this is Julia, we're Am here I to... dead? Oh, bless. Julia, if this is you I'm talking to, then sadly you are. But we're here to find where you're finally buried, your resting place. I just gave me the chills, that did. I've got chills. But I imagine that, you know, many spirits may not know where they are. Well, exactly. If they're in between worlds, if they are murder victims especially. Yeah. Because they're not, not being able to maybe move on to the next world. Yeah. Mm. That's not overly cheerful. No, that's not overly <laughs> cheerful, is it? Now, let's talk about the doom and more talk about the... Uh, about what you've got to say for yourself in here. Sorry for being so abrupt, but uh, I'd very much like to talk to you. I'd very much like to talk to any resident, residing spirits or people. Let's not forget that ghosts, if they are, if such things do exist, um, may still think that they are people living. This isn't creepy, I don't know what isn't. If there's anyone here that would like to come and talk to us or move towards me, and set this K2 meter off, this green light in my hand. Sorry, shouldn't call it a K2 meter. Whoa, Mark. What? Please come towards this green light. See if you can move it. Move it to the next green or even the, the middle yellow. Soon. Not soon, now. Come on. Let's have you, please. If there are any strong spirits in here, they would like to make their presence known by touching me or touching the device, the black box that I have in my hand, then please do. We'll try and point them out, but obviously we are at the edge of a nature reserve and you, you will get people, I don't know who would actually want to walk through here in the middle of the night, but um, they do, that is it. I don't even know how they can see the park. I know. It's pitch black. It is pitch black. I mean, look at this, this plot here. There is one, two, Three, four, all where these where these mounds are. Five, six at the back. Seven, eight. Nine by my feet. Ten. Unfortunately, you do have to actually try and step over some of the uh, the graves sometimes, and you will catch your feet on them. There's just so many of them. So, um, as we walked away, I know I didn't get this on camera, but we only took maybe 10, 20 paces onto this path there now, and um, and the app, we just kept the app, go the app going all the time. So the first name that came up was Thomas, and... The victim's name is Mrs. Thomas. The victim's name is M Mrs. Thomas. It's quite strange. There's been a, 
a lot of the stuff you mentioned we mentioned before to do with bedroom and living room and the kitchen, the kitchen quite a came lot. up as well. And then we just realised, sadly, she was dismembered in the kitchen. No. Hi. Sorry. Julia, is this you? Can you hear us? Are we near you? Have we located the right part? There's a lot of overgrown graves in amongst there as well. This is Thomas, are you here in this part of the cemetery? Can you let us know? Can you show yourself to us? Well, let's keep, we'll keep going down this, this main... We'll stay to the main path, OK? We're going to stay on this path. You need to tell us left or right, though, if we le need to leave it. I'd be amazed if it's that, if it's that accurate. Don't leave. OK, well, we're not, we're not leaving. Do you want us to come back where we were? Should we come back? Don't leave. Be directed by a flaming app. <laughs> it's the first time it's ever happened. Bird. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a cat, it's definitely a bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear that, Mark? What did you say? Keep recording. Keep recording. We will. This is absolutely... This is crazy. I've never had such strange... I mean, this is just... Uh, this here is just... Creepy as. Any spirits can come through and want to show them to us. Just please come through. Please show yourselves. Or give us a signal or talk to us through this app. There's a nice bit of pareidolia for you. See the face and the moss and the gravestone. <laughs> oh yes, like the skull. Yeah, it looks like a skull. Yeah. Make of that what you will. Is awful to see, but kind of creepy in the same way. Acid. Yeah. Angels are his wing clipped. Terrible. Right, small break, folks. I'm going to set a few things up. And we're going to choose here as our Hell. next location. Hell. And on that note, I'll see you in a bit. So folks, after a short break, we've uh, set back up. We did a bit of calling out, didn't we? We did. Also with the camera not on and everything turned off and quiet and just in the darkness to see yeah. if anything would happen. Nothing, nothing happened. No, we did it about, about 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. Just to soak in the atmosphere. Soak in the atmosphere. Call out. Didn't we? Silence. A bit of calling out. Nothing. So... I'm going to disturb the silence now by putting on the spirit box. I haven't had this out for a while, so apologies again to people who don't like this kind of stuff, but, you know, I'll try and keep it on a low this time when I do the edit, because normally it's like blaring and everybody's like thinking, I hate this thing, I want to turn off any moment. <laughs> so, in a bit. So some of you will be pleased to know that we ditched the spirit box. <laughs> it died. It, it died. <laughs> it died in a cemetery. Um, and some might say, oh, why don't you just bloody bury the damn thing there? <laughs> but uh, no. It's we've... always worth a try. Everything's miss. worth a try. It says Miss. Miss. Um, well, we're back on the Ghost Tube app. We're got, yeah, we're back on the app. We're going to have one, one final session here. See if we can get any kind of the devices set off, see if anything can come forward at all. 
um, but so far it's been very quiet apart from obviously the uh, the app going doing doing its thing nothing has gone off cat ball zero k2 zero yeah, melrem zero not even a flicker um, the only thing noisy in the, in the app is the constant supply of aeroplanes via Heathrow but you can't help that so the app just called out the word Jean which is my middle name so if there's somebody here called Jean let us know that's my middle name none no oh my gosh none <laughs> <laughs> are you the nun that is meant to haunt here? My goodness There's meant me. to be a nun that haunts or lo and shows themselves near Julia's grave. If you're the nun, <laughs> please let us know. I don't know why I'm laughing. The nun, is, is your name Jean? Jean, are you the nun? And if so, please show yourself. We won't be frightened. I might be. <laughs> We won't be frightened, we won't run away, but we just would love to know if you know where Julia's located. That was a bit mad. <laughs> Amazing. Are you the nun? Are you a nun? Are you in here? Please talk to us, come back to us. Please come forward. If you can't see us and you can hear us, and follow the direction of our voices and we come mean forward. You no harm. We mean you no harm. We do a, a what sight. should I do? What should I do? I don't know what to do. Okay, so whoever you are, if you can see the little lights on the floor, there's green lights, green lights. If you want to sort of go near those, they'll set statue. things. Statue. Statue. Well, we're surrounded by statues. Are you near <laughs> the statue? Mark's going to walk over to an angel. Okay, if you can see Mark, Mark, do you want to look over towards that angel yeah. again? Mark's going to walk towards the statue, okay, he's going to take a little device with him. And if you can see the green light, come near it in a minute, near the statue, and that means we know you're here with us. Don't be afraid, it won't hurt you. So Mark's heading towards the statue right now. You can reach out and reach out and touch my hand, please. What was that? I don't know, something just fallen in my foot. Shine the light over here. Is anything over here in my foot? Something fell as though it fell here. I'll put that at the foot of the statue. Let me just turn that off. Murdered. Oh my, oh my god. god. Yes, Mrs. Thomas, this is you. We know you were murdered. We know. That's why we've come to find you. Your final remains. We know you're in here. Murdered. Mrs. Thomas, if this is you, come speak to us more, please. Are we near you? I've always felt drawn to this side of the cemetery for years. Please let us know if you're here. I hear you. <laughs> thank you. If this is you, thank you. That's, good. That's pretty mad to be fair. Is there anything we can do? Is there anything we can find? Are you near nearby your grave? We'd, I would just want to find you where you are. We just don't know where you are. Hold. 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 Okay, hold on. Okay, we can hold on. If you could show yourself, maybe lead us to your grave. Guide. Guide. Unbelievable. Will you guide us?
Right folks, we are going to wrap it up here tonight. It's been a very good one to be fair. Uh, I've really enjoyed coming here. It's been fantastic having Lindsay here. Uh, good to finally do some with her. I mean, we are members of the Ghost Club as well. But um, We've nobody... had some amazing things come through if you <laughs> believe in this, the you, Ghost App thing. If you but... believe in the Ghost App thing, we have had some pretty relevant and amazing things come yeah. through. More or less on cue as well. Um, but I'll review all... It's still coming through. Hammer Hi. came through before. Abused. All relevant to the uh, to the murder. On that note, though, have a nice night, and we'll see you very soon on don't, the next one. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> don't have nightmares. As Shirley used to tell us. <laughs> tell our folks.